Told Kira I'd give her a signed dollar if she eats a mealworm. So we're gonna film it. <laughs> you ever had a mealworm before? <laughs> you gonna eat it? Am I gonna eat it? You have to swallow it and chew it. <laughs> a bird couldn't even Our eat it. Our parrot didn't even like it. <laughs> I told you they come back alive once they get wet, so you better chew it fast. Oh, it is already moving. Don't even. <laughs> Does she have to crunch it? Yes, that's a chew. <laughs> it's not add a word like that. Does she need to crunch? Crunch. It? Need to be really. Just his guts oh. will squirt all over your mouth. Bite it. <laughs> <laughs> no water until you swallow it. <laughs> Is it just, just crunchy? You get little perks. It's his legs. You were just tasting his legs. It was his penis. <laughs> no puking. Against the rules. Fear factor rules. Hajime! Hi, I don't have a ton of footage from Reno for a couple reasons. One, we were in meetings like the whole entire first day and went to a Hall of Fame banquet. And I didn't think it was um, right to be filming in the middle of it. It just seemed a little sketchy. Two, we were in workshops the second day and do a Q&A where we're sitting in a circle with like 30 kids and got to answer a bunch of their questions. Which was my favorite part of Reno. But that also seemed like maybe I shouldn't be filming people. Two. Working and the meat. I was working and had to do the meat, so there was a lot of that going on, and again, it didn't feel right filming. But I got some footage, and I will tell you my story from Reno. So here we go. I woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning to get to Minneapolis to fly to Reno. On the second flight, I actually met a kid who watches the vlogs. I think I said this like 30 times throughout the weekend, but kids were like, yeah, watch your vlogs all the time. And it still blows my mind that people other than my mom and girlfriend watch these things. On the plane, um, he's like, Hey, are you Sean Francis? He's like, do you still have any little shirts? And I was like, of course, I didn't even get to Reno yet. I technically got rid of one of those shirts before I even got off the plane. Dude, you just got the first Team Hood shirt. I did get the first Team Hood shirt, rock on. What's your name, PR? First time at the summit? <laughs> I'm Andy Carbaugh, I'm with PRS 12-6. First time at the summit. <laughs> Off to a good start. Uh, the first thing we all the elites and emerging elites do is they sit in a room and they have speakers kind of speak to you and tell you what's up. So uh, right away there's like a sports psychologist. Um, they showed us the, the guest speaker they brought in which was Dan and Dave from those Dan and Dave commercials. 100 meters in 10.3 seconds. Dave can I jump 6 feet 10 and 3 quarter inches. This summer they'll battle it out in Barcelona for the title of world's greatest athlete. So we met uh, Dave, he's a pretty cool guy, and uh, he had a pretty awesome story, and he ran the whole Olympics with a broken foot. Which blew my mind. Right at the end, they gave us um, kind of a speech, they were just kind of saying... That the French and the Germans are jumping way higher than the Americans, and that is unacceptable. <laughs> Which they are. It's not like we're not trying to jump higher than them. <laughs> the best way I've ever heard it put is there's this basketball coach at NDSU who said she never yelled at her athletes if they missed a shot or they missed a play because they don't intentionally go out there and try and miss a shot. We're not going out there not trying to jump 19 and a half feet and not to win medals. Everyone's trying to do that, or at least I am. It was kind of a weird spot and I think everyone kind of left there like, you know, we're trying our best and I'm sorry that it's not as high as you guys wish we were. It's definitely not as high as we wish it were either. Well, what are you gonna do? We're gonna <laughs> keep trying and do what we're supposed to do. After that, uh, we went to go do a shakeout. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is my wife, Julia. I don't know who's gonna be watching this. Everybody's gonna be watching this. <laughs> millions of viewers. And this is Mark Hollis. He's gonna draw. Yeah. Sean, do you have one for me? I had to like... I'm in the same as you, man. I'll have to draw my own when I get home. Well, we're gonna draw... Crayon. We're gonna help uh, him draw some cards! Uh, marketing and organic coconut water. I was gonna say it's one of my sponsors, but it's not really. 
<laughs> it could be you. Yeah. So how are you feeling about the summit no, no, experience no, no, no. so far? It's pretty good. Got yeah. you a little pissed off in that last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, how's the summit going so far? Terrible. Awful. No, I'm just kidding. It's no good. It's, it's bad. pretty fantastic. What are you this most excited about being here? Yeah, now you have a camera in your face. You're like, this is good. I'm most excited about just... Being a total ham in front of the crowd. Being a ham. <laughs> I love Thanks, being a ham. Crowd. I don't know about anyone else out there, but traveling takes it out of me quite a bit. So um, that shakeout felt pretty crappy. <laughs> and I found out I was jumping on Saturday and got bumped out of the elite competition, which was another one of those like. Son of a. What the. What, dang it. But um, it is what it is, so um, I try to keep that whole positive attitude like, hey, I don't get to jump on Friday, but I get to jump on Saturday, which gives me an extra day of rest, and that extra day of rest will be huge, and hopefully I jump a little bit better on Saturday. And so that's kind of the outlook I took on it. In that meeting, they said that top three Americans will get to jump in the Melro Melrose games. So that was like the farthest thing from my mind because, you know, like Jordan Scott was there, Jack Whip, and Mark Hollis, Mike Arnold, and Brad Walker, Coover, and Delight, all these just really phenomenal pole vaulters. So that wasn't even on my radar. I was just like, ah, I'm going to go jump the best I can on Saturday since Friday didn't quite work out. I shook out pretty quick, and then uh, I started filming Renaud. Uh, Renaud Lavalini's jumps. And he was jumping from just five less and just bombing 520. It was the sickest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. So that night we got all decked out, dressed up, and looked all, all sharp and fancy. Uh, we went to the Hall of Fame banquet. <laughs> the best story I have from the Hall of Fame. I can't really tell you everything that was happening with Steve Chappell and his wife, although it was hilarious and everyone who was there will know exactly what I'm talking about. Someone was walking up to the front stage and tripped a little bit, and sure enough, in Joe Dial fashion, he just started laughing. <laughs> Laughing because someone just tripped a little bit, which immediately made me start to laugh. <laughs> and a couple of people around us who <laughs> saw Joe Dial laughing at just an innocent little trip. <laughs> Joe Dial's probably the funniest guy I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> so we woke up that next day. Uh, bright and early and they kind of presented all of the elite and emerging elite athletes and let uh, Dave kind of tell his story that he told all the elites the night before. And I ran into my Apple Valley High School athletes. They were in Reno so they were like, Hey Sean, you know you're going to be up there and I don't know if you're going to be able to use your GoPro so can we use your GoPro? It'll be really fun. We get to use your GoPro. Let's see the dance. What's the game at, Sile? Oh, yeah. Do the chicken dance. Oh my god. No, I Do can't. Do the chicken dance. To, this, this is really embarrassing. No one laugh at me. Okay, just... <laughs> Celebratory dance when she makes a bar. Oh. <laughs> so I gave them the GoPro, taught them how to use it, and they filmed it for me. And my PR is 551, which is 181, and I train in Minneapolis, Minnesota with Flight Deck Athletics. After that, they took all the elites and sent them to a room where they had a bunch of high school athletes into circles where they could sit with an, um, an elite or emerging elite and ask them anything for like an hour and a half. And that was by far my favorite part. It's those kids who remind me what pole vault's all about. It's all about just having fun. They were just excited to just ask questions. I got re-inspired just by talking to those kids. It was awesome. And I love it and I wish I could do it on a weekly basis. Which I kind of can because I have this blog and you guys can ask anything you want. I would say about only four or five of the kids in, the, in my group knew who I was even. When it got over, it seemed like all the kids who kind of saw where I was and knew who I was because of these vlogs came running over and were asking for autographs and high fives and shakes and hugs and pictures and all sorts of cool stuff. And it, it was surreal because I'm like... I'm just a big dork that wore an ugly owl shirt one time and everyone thought it was cooler than I did and now Team Hoot's kind of my thing. <laughs> So that's kind of what happened and then uh, I got I sold about all of my shirts I'm still overwhelmed by it. I just think about it. I'm like what happened? How did everyone know who I was? <laughs> how am I inspiring people? You know, I got a lot of you inspire me blah. And I was like how I don't I just do what I do I suppose I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out and I can't I was meeting kids who I put in my vlog so I didn't know who they were so uh, I met the kid who like did handstands down the stairs, if you remember that from one of the intros. Hi, vlog? Hi. What's your name? Brandon. Hey, you guys may have seen me. I'm the one who would walk down the stairs on my hands. 
I met uh, the kid's YouTube name who was Butt Cabbages. <laughs> I met Butt Cabbages. <laughs> that sounds funny, but I did. I met Butt Cabbages. I met this really cool kid who started making vlogs because I do. And actually, I've been watching them for the last couple weeks. And they're really cool. It's cool seeing um, the high school perspective, and it's the same thing. It's the same way I used to look at high school back then. So you make vlogs too? Yes. What gave you that crazy idea? This crazy guy right here? <laughs> Who would have thunk? Awesome. Hey, it's nice to meet you, man. Keep making those things. I like that. So one of my main objectives in going to Reno was to finally meet Bubba Sparks because he's been talk contacting me since like the beginning of last summer and he's the one who got me to go to Reno. He pretty much one day was just like, you're dumb if you don't go to Reno. Reno is a big deal. You have to go to Reno. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I have the money. He's like, you have to go to Reno. I was trying to track him down all weekend and I couldn't do it. I never found him and it drives me insane that I couldn't do it, but oh, I'll find him eventually. But anyways, I went to the meet and sat on the Masters side because the Masters were on like the left side of the arena and the Elites were on the other side warming up. And I watched Bubba Sparks jump and it's just amazing seeing these Masters guys still doing it because I feel like an old man sometimes and I, the bull vault just seems mind boggling because um, it wears and tears on your body. But these guys are still doing it. I kind of saw Bubba Sparks but I didn't. But I will hunt you down and I will find you. I meant that in a positive, kind way, <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> so Reno was packed. I didn't even get to see the elites from up close jump because I was on the other side and all the seats were taken. Um, I got a, a little bit of Renaud's 19 foot attempts, which were pretty close. Um, but again, I think it, it was just cooler sitting at the 13 to 14 foot line watching them do shorts and warm ups the other day. Back and went to bed because I had another big day the next day. I had to wake up early at 8.30 to talk to Pete McGinnis. So at 8.30 in the morning, I went and talked to Pete McGinnis who is the biomechanist for uh, USA Track and Field, I think, or maybe just the pole vaulters. Or I met Pete a couple years ago, um, the first time I went to Reno and I was telling him I was starting to do this master's degree thing on the ground reaction forces of the pole vault. And uh, he was a huge help because it, it's hard to find pole vault research. And he was just like, oh yeah, here you go. Research. So he helped me out there and I thanked him a lot. So at 10.30 I worked to meet for like three hours, jumping up and off the pit, trying not to wear myself out too much because I had to compete myself later that day. I counted that as my shakeout for the day, jumping up and down on pads for, pads for three hours. As I was walking out of the meet, um, to go rest and change and get ready to do my meet, um, a kid came up to me and goes, Sean, I need a medium shirt. Do you have any more mediums? So I'm like, ah, oh, I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, all I have is like two smalls left and that's all I've got. And he's like, <sighs> my sister really wants a medium. And I'm like, I got the one I'm wearing, but that's about it. You know, I'm sorry. Man. And he's like, I'll buy it from you. And I, <laughs> I was like, dude, I've been wearing this thing for like a day and a half. Are you sure? And he's like, yeah, I want it stankin' all. <laughs> I sold all my shirts plus the one I was wearing which is awesome. So I'm sorry for whoever got that shirt. It probably stinks. With a capital ank. <laughs> so enjoy that, I guess, or don't enjoy it. You might want to wash it 12 times, <laughs> just saying. So I got back to the meet and was ready to rock and roll. I was feeling all right, not like 100%. Yeah, warmed up and everything was under. I, everything I was doing just took off under. I was just hauling it. I was running really fast. <laughs> Warmed up, you know, my four left poles I were way too small, and my um, six left poles were way too small too. And then uh, I started on the 16015.5 flex in the meet, cleared 520 on my second attempt. Second attempt, 17 feet. I went to 530. I jumped that on my first attempt. And then the bar went to 540, and I jumped that on my first attempt. Time to PR, 
which that 540 jump was my best jump of the day. It just everything felt great and I finally hit it right and it was pretty. And then I started getting really tired after that. I don't know if it was the altitude or the fact I was working all day that day and was just kind of tired. I have no idea, but the legs were like, I think I'm going to be done soon. Then at 5.50, I had just had two ugly attempts. In my third attempt, I was just like, all right, take a big deep breath, relax, and just hit it really hard. And I did, and I jumped 5.50. In my third attempt, I was jacked to just jump that bar once last year. Now I did it in the opening meet of the season, so I was pretty pumped about that. A 550 opener, and yeah, that's 550. Sweet, but still, that 540 jump was way prettier. 560, I was just done. There wasn't really much left in the tank, and um, Danny Wilkerson was helping coach me, and he just was like, You're tired, man. It's <laughs> like, I feel tired. <laughs> He's like, Yeah, you're just kind of losing posture. I'm like, Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> tired I don't know what to do and he's like, like let's just move you up an inch move you down an inch on the pole so for my last attempt that's what I did I moved up an inch and I moved down an inch on my pole and well it wasn't the prettiest attempt of the day but let's just put it this way for Caroline and working with me about turning early it was the earliest turn I think I've ever had in a meet it looked like it was supposed to look and to me it kind of looked like a blow through in the video but um Good things are on their way. Yeah, it was a good meet, a 550 opener, can't beat that. And um, I want to thank Dustin DeLeo a bunch for helping me get started because that was his, he, okay. So Dustin, just, I, I asked if he'd help and he didn't even have to. He said, yeah man, I'll help you out get your mids uh, if that's all you want. He was catching my mids and you know, he's giving me little pointers, I was running a little tight, you know, because I was a little excited. So you just gotta relax and feel the run and stuff. Dustin was sitting in third place to go to the Milrose games. He helped me jump 540 and 50, which put me in third place to go to the Melrose games, which knocked him off the list. Thanked him personally, but I gotta thank him on this vlog too, because that it just reminds me of that Earl Bell um, story that Earl Bell broke the world record way back when, and uh, he let someone borrow his poles so he could PR and break the world record. So Earl Bell only had the world record for a matter of minutes before it broke again and it just felt like that same cool story the pole vault's kind of bigger than itself you know like what other sport would you do that in i think it's one of the coolest things in the entire world so thank you dustin for that 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 yeah speechless thank you so stats from the day my f step moved back another foot from where it has been uh my mid was still like six to nine inches under and my step was six inches under I didn't move back because it was working, but now my shoulders are paying for it because they hurt a little bit this week. And that meet uh, qualified me for indoor nationals, and I get to go to the Milrose Games uh, Valentine's weekend. Who would have, I, that was, again, that wasn't even on my radar, but. If you guys don't know what that is, you should check it out. If you've ever seen a televised track meet, it's probably that one you've seen. I'll just leave it at that. And then after that, all the awesome, like, hoot crew. I'm going to call you guys the hoot crew. All the kids who watched me on the vlogs and the parents, uh, they stuck around. And I had a little band section that just stuck to watch me around at the last competition of the entire Reno Pole Vault Summit. Is this going? Yep, here's the vlog, man. Right. Yep. <laughs> how, how was the summit so far? The summit was awesome. What was your favorite part? Oh, 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 I like this one. Good answer. Yeah, that's my best answer. <laughs> and so I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, it made the atmosphere way more fun. So when the meet got over, all those people came down, and um, again, I, I feel funny signing autographs because I don't feel like I deserve to do it yet, but it was awesome doing it and high five and taking pictures and everything. So thank you guys for sticking around. I couldn't have jumped that bar if you weren't there. Yeah, also, also when I first met you, I commented that you weren't very tall. I, I want to apologize for that. Um, <laughs> So that was Reno, really. Steve Chappell came up to me after, who owns UCS Poles, and was like, you know, good jumping. And um, I'm still a little intimidated talking to Steve, and he told me he watches these vlogs. And I was insanely embarrassed right away because two vlogs ago I was running around in a Speedo. Ready to go! Woo! Uh, oh, God. The owner of UCS Poles saw me in a Speedo. Reno is Disneyland for pole vaulters. 
That's all I can say about it. You just can't find anything better in the world. So, uh, if you guys haven't been to Reno, go next year. So like always, please subscribe, share, like these videos if you think they're kind of fun and cool. I will try and get that Q&A vlog up this week. Good news, bad news, it will be up this week. Bad news, I didn't get to ask a bunch of the elites anything because we were busy and stuck in meetings and all over the place. Oh, and see these sweet hoot shirts? I have a box of them left here. I just couldn't bring them to Reno because they didn't fit. So I will leave a link in the description for the PayPal if you guys would still want a hoot shirt. That's it. I'll see you guys later. See ya. Boop. While feeling crappy. So, I don't know. You have to stay positive or else pole vault is going to eat you alive because you always end on a miss. So you always end with failure and somehow you got to find a way to stay positive and look at the good things that happen. So the good things that happen were... I was feeling like crap and I could still jump 17 feet with a short approach. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I learned that I need to take more time in between jumps, and that, in between jump days. And that is huge. So that's probably the biggest thing I took from that day. You were just tasting his legs. It was his penis. <laughs>